Now, if you stick around till the new minimum wage for Nigeria is agreed sometime next year, uh, not likely it's going to be agreed until the end of this year, you just be getting about $82 per month. But if you move to South Africa today uh, and you got all necessary papers, the new minimum wage there is about $253 per month. Uh, you need any calculator to do the math? I'm not sure you do. But well, let's ask Bolanle Agbaje, who is a member of the economic think tank at Financial Derivatives Company, how this uh, figure, uh, where would she want to have that minimum wage? Uh, and this is not putting you in line with your employers, really, about <laughs> whether you're jumping ship to South Africa to take $253 per month as minimum wage or $82 per month in, in Nigeria. But that's one story that is on one side. The, the big story here is... Uh, which is also big, is this OPEC meeting, and suddenly we find not every day that you have a Saudi Arabia's oil minister uh, uh, come to a place like Nigeria. Uh, not often. When folks like that arrive at your doorstep, something is fishy. It, mean, it means business. It's, it's, it means business. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, um, looking at that, it just shows you how much, you know, it's really affecting the Saudi economy. You know, but it's weird because they're still increasing production. And despite the fact that they want, you know, higher prices, they're visiting other, you know, top oil economies to, you know, further cut their production. But um, I, I guess right now it means that them visiting Nigeria would call to question whether they want Nigeria to actually cut production by a significant amount or by a small amount. We're not too sure. Maybe asking us, when are you guys going to be ready? Because by the time the meeting opens up on December 6th, it's going to be open sesame, as it were. Exactly. So that's not the time to have some close talks. So mm -hmm. right now, perhaps Saudi Arabia wants to know, where are you? Are you with us? Mm -hmm. Are you guys ready? What, what are we doing presently? 2.1, 2.2? Yeah, about 2.1, 1.9 sometimes in, in a few months, but about 2.1. So Outlook for next year is 2.3, according to NNPC chief? Well, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, for 20, for 2019 in the, in the budget uh, proposal being put together. So this, this strategy is very good on the oil production side, but uh, what we, we have in the news is that um, uh, Kachiko, our own uh, oil, junior oil minister, or deputy oil minister, uh, also hinted about refineries uh, to the Saudis, see if there's anything they can do to help us. Yeah, well, like I mentioned, if, if you know, regarding the refineries or investing or looking for, you know, more investments from other countries like Saudi, I don't know if, you know, it's something they would consider now because all, all that, what that means is that, you know, it will boost our production even further. So I think right now, you know, talking to them about it might not, you know, yield results as much as we expect in Nigeria. And regarding the refineries, we all mentioned that, you know, re building a refinery is not a small joke. It's, it's something that will take time. So refinery Binary talk is, you know, at some point when hopefully all prices are way higher than what, you know, it is at the moment. So whatever the conversation w was yesterday is going to be more about upstream than downstream. Yeah. What Saudi uh, oil minister or energy minister was here for wasn't really much about the refineries. It's about the next meeting. It's about the next meeting and possible output cuts. Because and that's what most people expect, you know. Or perhaps the, the digging for oil in the <laughs> northeast well, and elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. 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 But, you know, the bulk of it would, you know, what would be what it would lead to, you know, the meeting next week. Yes. So, so we have a lot to be on the lookout for on the Nigerian side and on the Saudi side ahead of uh, uh, that meeting. Oil prices is recovering. Uh, that's one good news this morning, isn't it? Yeah, but it, it went down sharply this morning right before we came in to about $58 per barrel, despite the fact that, you know, Britain's large oil field in the North Sea has been shut down for repair. So we, it's just, it just boils down to, you know, people are, you know, speculating on what, you know, the outcome of this OPEC meeting would, you know, what, what the result would yield. So most, you know, investors are wary about what oil prices would, um, would stand in the next few weeks. And, and because of that, we see, you know, shakes in the oil prices. Uh, well, what is the little uh, uh, nudge up? in the uh, uh, oil reserve, our FX reserves, where is that money coming from? Well, we believe it's from the euro bond issue that, that happened, was it last week? Yes, you know, just so about two weeks ago. Yeah, yes. about two weeks ago. So we believe, the cash is already here? Yes, possible. And it's, it's more or less, you know, increasing our borrowings to, you know, increase our savings. So mm. it's nothing to really to smile about because at some point when it's time to pay back, you know, it would fill it in the reserves as yeah, well. You take a loan from the bank, you put it in your account, you look like a you big look man. You like, look exactly. Yeah. I don't know where well, that money is still there. <laughs> uh, either way, you're going to pay back. Yeah. So either way, it's not your money. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> Technically speaking. Okay.
we can, we but can, it's something, we can do it's, it's something to be happy about because at least it's something we can use in the short term, you know, to for, for different finances. You know, 2018 budget, you know, we still have some costs that we, we, we still, you know, we're still working on. And mm. obviously, the 2019... Have a lot of capital uh, projects we haven't fixed for exactly. 2018 calendar. Exactly. Which, of course, definitely will overlap into 2019. 2019, yeah. Yes. So that those are some of the you know short term projects we're still working on. Okay, uh, let's talk about the naira, which is the the downers on, on your list. Yeah, well, the naira is has depreciated marginally in the parallel market to about um, three hundred and sixty six naira to the dollar. Why? Well, we we're thinking it's because of these same speculative attacks. Nobody really knows where oil prices would you know stand in the next few weeks. So we're seeing more people pull out you know, the, pull out the dollars from, you know, the economy. But also, it comes at a time when we expect that, you know, there are a lot of visiting, you know, family and friends during this period. So what happens is, you know, more people come into Nigeria to visit family, but we're not seeing that effect on the exchange rates at the moment. So those are some of the issues that we're, we're seeing with the, with the rates at the moment. So Naira is under pressure? Yes, it's yes. under pressure. In spite of visiting friends and relatives? Yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, in the December period, a lot of people from abroad, you know, they come, they usually come back during this period to, you know, visit, visit family and friends. And in the process, by the time they change their current their dollars into Naira, it should, it should actually appreciate the currency. Mm. But right now, we're not seeing that effect. It could possibly be that the number of people coming into Nigeria, you know, have reduced significantly. But they're not coming. But, or they're not coming. Or they're coming, but, you know, some of them would rather keep their money in dollars than, you know, to change them. So, mm. Or they bring in... Fewer dollars. Fewer dollars, yeah. Things exactly. are hard everywhere. It's, it's Even it's, in Europe. Yes, it is. It is. Things are very difficult. You know, different countries are facing different issues. In fact, the global economy is. For example, if you're in the UK by now, you're not going to be coming home and spraying pounds, darling. No, no, not really. Yeah, because you're not sure where Brexit is going. Exactly. Whichever way Brexit goes, it's so going to be it's going to be unpleasant. Yeah, so so you're not going to come this December because Brexit is sometime next year. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you're not too sure whether your job or whatever will happen. Uh, for some folks are they, saying there will be, there'll be there'll a recession in the UK if, 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 if the Brexit does not happen or whatever. So, uh, so if, if, you're, if you're in the UK, don't expect those guys or relatives to come home with a lot of <laughs> pound sterling as they did in previous years. We're just trying to, not spoiling your mood, but just telling you the fact things are hard <laughs> out there. Uh, okay, so um, let's talk about this uh, minimum wage. Yes, yeah, so where would you want your salary paid uh, next year? $80, $82 an, uh, per month or 253 Dollars is not a hard choice for you. You know, on paper, the news from um, um, South Africa, you know, increasing their new minimum wage to about two hundred and fifty-three dollars per month. I think you know, once the Labour Congress that gives in you Nigeria, about uh, eighty thousand naira. Yeah, no, it's more, more than that. Yeah, that's a, about yeah, hundred and twenty, yeah. about one hundred and thirty there about. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But, you know, when I'm sure when the Labour Congress sees th this particular news, they will be like, mm. you know, so what, what exactly are we fighting for? We're fighting for about only about 30,000 naira, and, you know, there's this back and forth. But it's also important to remi remind ourselves, or, you know, go back to the drawing board. Nigeria and South Africa stand in two different places at the moment. As much as Nigeria is the leading giant within Africa, but when you look at some of the challenges we faced, and what South Africa is facing at the moment is obviously not on the same level. Although, the number of generators? <laughs> uh, petrol? Yes. Exactly. And, you know, there's, there's stable electricity in South Africa. You know, those are some of the issues that we're looking at. But even looking at the macroeconomic perspective within mm -hmm. South Africa, as much as South Africa is in a recession now, you know, the population is far lower than what it is in Nigeria. In Nigeria, we have about, only, we have about 190, you know, thousand or million people. Mm -hmm. In South Africa, we only have about 57 million people. So mm -hmm. it's more or less like, imagine you having, a, you're, you're a father, for example, and you have, your income has increased and you have, you're having more children at the same time. It means that in real terms, your income hasn't actually changed. In relative terms or in absolute terms? We in just finished talking about... <laughs> <laughs> in relative terms, In relative terms, yeah. terms you're, you're not doing well. You're not doing well. So in absolute terms, it's, it's, you're seeing that your income has actually increased, but your costs have increased at the moment. Mm. You know, in Nigeria, we faced, you know, the issue with oil, the, the cutback in oil prices and which affected, you know, our revenue. In South Africa, oil is not their problem. Their problem is, although they don't really have, they have problems within the agricultural sector and which mm. is what led them led them to you know face the recession at the moment but really most of their income comes from the gold the diamonds the platinum so those that's are the extractive the, industry. exactly the mm. metals and all that so that's their major source of income so it's, it's it's not surprising that they actually have enough to go around and also gd per head would be more higher that will be higher than you know what most likely if we ask them in south africa this minimum wage would they also be saying perhaps it's not even enough 
Exactly. So, you know, it's different strokes for different folks between, within what they actually face. Whichever way you put it, whether in absolute or relative terms, 30,000 Naira is the bottom of the barrel for us in Nigeria. It is. It is. But it's, it's the reality of things at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, because um, 30,000 Naira relative to our, uh, our per capita income and, and, and all of that. Not, whichever way you look at it, it's not good. So, uh, some money came in overnight, folks, uh, and um, we're just getting that in the news. 788 billion, thereabout was the FAC allocation. So all the 36 state governments, the finance commissioners and the Ministry of Finance, of course, sat together late last night to approve 788 billion as the, what they will share, or what they have already shared. Sorry, the money's gone, as I said this morning, so. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't yeah. it? Yes. Um, yeah, that's much higher, that's higher than, than October. Yeah, about 12% higher than what was shared in October. So everybody's happy. Everybody's happy in the, in, in the short Absolutely. term. Absolutely, doesn't you know, make front page of newspapers this morning because there was no fight. <laughs> <laughs> there was no quarrel about it. Yeah. So everybody shared the money very nicely, and everybody back in their, uh, 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 in their nice cars and off back to their state capital. Yeah, in October, in the month of October. This is the last I mean, sharing, technically, before the end of the year. Yes, but the, yes. the, the sharing in December is. We forecast that it should be marginally lower than what it is now, so it's not so... Yeah, 788 yes. that was shared yesterday? Yeah, because in October we saw oil prices were very high. They were as high as $80 per barrel, mm. so that increased our you know, oil revenue. Then our profit, petroleum profit tax as well increased, you know, VAT. So some, those are some of the, you know, sources of revenue that were seen in October that was actually, you know, that actually contributed to the increase in fact. But in the month of November, we're seeing, you know, changes in that. Oil revenue is down. You know, although our external reserves have increased marginally, but we should we, we expect that the revenue shared, you know, in December should actually decline compared to what it is now. But but but, but this is a money that goes largely into salaries and wages. Yes, and it's it's great news for commodity. Well, it's 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 great news for commodity producers. For those who work with the government, maybe you just take it and put some aside very nicely for uh, rents and mortgages and what have you and, and school fees. They come December is one very. Uh, very short time, month, yeah. and the longest month is always January. Yeah, where you have to now pay school fees and all that. So mm. it's to curb, you know, spending in December for the Christmas holidays and, you know, save more for... So whatever you get now, folks, kids are going on holiday in two weeks' time or thereabouts. Uh, yeah. Likely. Uh, and once they stay home, they tend to eat and consume more. You, you know that already. So um, how does this go pale? How does this go to the market straight? Do you think the market will take this 788 billion into account? I'm sure the central bank is waiting for this money <laughs> by next week well, so for, for with treasuries and all of that. Yeah, typically, once you know there's increase in salaries, you know, salaries paid and all that, we should see, you know. Uh, more spending within the economy, which should actually boost, you know, commodity prices. So mm. it's not so great news for commodity prices because at the moment... Yeah, not so good. Just uh, one minute to go. We just try to look at, look at that market uh, survey. Um, a bag of pepper, the price is going up. Tomato, 50 kg is up. Rice is going up. Uh, it's, not look, it's, not, it's not looking good. It's not looking good, but, you know, it's the reality. So we hope that, you know, from the beginning of next year, things should actually you know, stabilize a bit when, you know, spending has actually reduced. But this Christmas season, we should expect, you know, the price of rice, tomatoes, some of which we use to, you know, use during, use mostly during the Christmas holidays to actually increase further. Now some good news there. I see a lot of uh, uh, three red and one green shoot there. The other three are neuter. Take notice of the red, guys. Uh, take the green in and think about to do about the gray. Shoots. Thank you very much, uh, Bonali Lutus. Thank we you. Are so uh, Bonali Agbaje, thank you very much for, <laughs> for coming through thank this you. morning. And do have a very a nice day and the thank rest of the you. week. Uh, let's come back after the break. We'll talk about the SACOL. It's the Sky Aviation Handling Company, the initiation of the coverage by Coros Capital. We're taking a bit of that in. And of course, the Nara is under some pressure. Let's talk about that also when we return. <laughs>